but you need to call to see if you are eligible. Please feel free to pass this information along. The phone number to um, schedule an appointment and to conduct the screening is 512-392-1161 and the extension is 322. Again, that is 512-392-1161 extension 322. They are fluent in Spanish. And for more information, you can also uh, visit them on facebook.com slash CTX, Cat Travis X-Ray, Pinky Promise. Praise God. Um, if there are, and then um, Pastor will let us know about midweek this week. He will let us know. Uh, we will have midweek this week. At 6.30 on Wednesday, uh, log in and be blessed. Um, so now we're going to go into intercessory prayer. And instead of just praying what I believe is on my heart, today we are going to specifically ask if there are prayer requests. And if so, we want to um, come into agreement with you regarding those things that are near to your heart. Um, the word of God says, it's in the book of James. If there are any of them among you that are sick, that you are to call upon the elders of the church and that the uh, effectual and fervent prayer of the righteous will raise them up. And if there's any sin, that it would be forgiven. And so we want to stand in agreement, not saying um, that we are righteous in our own might or anything like that, but saying that we serve a risen Savior that has given us the authority, the spiritual authority to come against things that are plaguing and or attacking you. And we want to come together as a church and stand in agreement with you. So if there are any prayer requests this morning, please feel free to announce them, type them in. Um, whichever way you can communicate those with us so that we can make sure that we are also lifting up those requests. Clarity and to just be able to talk truly about things. Let's start. Am I, I would um, seek to like focus to um, more like cleaning, cleaning, cleaning a plate, cleaning house, so I can truly focus so on what. Removing distractions. Removing distractions. Okay. And so I don't see any on um, Facebook Live or in, the, in our chat before. Is there? Um, my mo mother said health. Health? Health. God, I want to um, just say that we know that when we go before God in prayer, that it is an exhibition of our faith because to even ask means that we know that he is capable of doing. I'll say that again. To ask, to petition is to say that we know, we believe he is capable of doing. So we're going into this prayer knowing that he has already figured it out, that the answer has already been provided, and that we are just asking for the manifestation thereof, and that we are also asking that in the meantime, that he strengthens us and encourages us to keep moving forward. Because as long as the devil can keep you bound in your mind, you won't be able to receive the promise even when it arrives. So we want to make sure that we're we're going into this prayer with the right mindset on this morning. So, Father, we just thank you. We bless your holy and righteous name for this day. We thank you, Almighty God, for loving us. We thank you for the power of prayer to be able to come together collectively and to seek your face. We ask, Almighty God, 
that you would incline your ear unto this prayer, O oh God, that it would come up before you as a fragrant offering, Father. We lift up every single prayer request, Almighty oh God, of your saints, of your servants, Father, and we ask, O oh God, that you would just begin to remove those things in our lives that cause hindrances and distractions, anything, Father, that is preventing us from clearly hearing your voice, O oh God. Your word declares that your sheep know your voice and that of a stranger they will not follow. Allow us to be in tune with your voice. Allow us to come apart and to be separate, O oh God, as your word says that we would be able to seek you father and that way we know when you are speaking that it isn't a question oh God allow us to feed and to build up our spirits in your word father so that we are misled or distracted we thank you father for the desire to want to hear you we thank you father for the desire to want to commune with you and we ask oh Lord that while we are seeking that you would be found. Your word says that it is possible, oh God, that if we would seek you, that we would find you, Father. So we stretch out, oh God, in faith, and we ask, Lord, that as we come closer to you, that you would come closer to us, oh God. We thank you for it all this morning. We thank you for clarity and for focus, Father, that we are led by our emotions, but Lord, we are led and driven and guided by your word. Your word says rejoice for the steps of a good man are ordered by God. So we rejoice on this morning and we thank you, Father, for ordering our steps that our path, Father, was already picked out, that it was already, Father, in route before we were born, that you already had a purpose for us. Now cause us to walk in it, oh God. Don't allow us to be entangled with the things of this world, but allow us, Father, to seek you above all else, Father, to seek you and to follow what you have declared is the straight and the narrow and the path, Father, that we all must travel if we want to see you one day and hear welcome. Lord, we rebuke and bind every foul spirit that comes to try to torment us and tries to distract us and to keep us bound, oh God. And we thank you for the freedom and the liberation that comes the blood of Jesus, Father, that was shed on Calvary's cross. And we thank you, Almighty God. We thank you that we walk in that freedom, that you give us the capacity to receive that freedom on this morning, oh God. We thank you, Father. Lord, we also lift up every single medical condition, Father, whether it be mental or physical, we put it under the blood of Jesus on this morning. And we declare, Father, that by the strength of Jesus, we were healed on Calvary, Father. We were healed ages ago. Now cause us to walk in it. We say that every, uh, every ailment of the body, whether it be the bones, Father, or the muscles, or the digestive tract, whatever it may be, we call it uh, healed on this morning and we say that it must line up and that anything contrary is under the blood of Jesus and that it must submit in the almighty name of God. We thank you Father for healing. We thank you Father for being able to walk and receive that healing and we rebuke and bind anything that the enemy is trying to do Father. Cause us oh God to also act in faith to be able to do things that are required oh God medically so that we can walk in our healing. We thank you oh God for doing it. We thank you almighty God. We lift up every single family that is represented father online father we breath we lift them up and we ask father that the unspoken prayers that 
you also hear those, oh God, that you also see about your saints. Those that have remained silent, oh God, you know, Father, the things that are heavy on their hearts. We lift up their children, oh God, their grandchildren, whether there are issues with their employers, oh God, or finances, whatever the issue may be, you know, Father. Your word says you know before we even ask, and we ask, oh Lord, that you would hear about those silent prayers. That you would, Father, minister to them and uplift them above the situation. That you would encourage their hearts. And that you would remind them, oh God, of your promise. That it is already done. And that every single thing is working out for the good of them who love you and who are called according to your purpose. We thank you, Father. Now silence the mouth of the enemy and allow us to hear you and you alone, O oh God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, O oh God. We also pray for the homeless, Father, we pray for those who are sick and shut in, those who are bereaving right now, Father. We ask that you would also minister unto them. Now use your servant on this morning, Father. We thank you for his submission, for his humility, O oh God, and his willingness to serve. And we ask that you would use him in a mighty way, Father. Anoint him with, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. We rebuke every distraction. We rebuke and bind every negative word that has been spoken. And we declare, O oh God, that no weapon formed against him shall prosper and that he is above every situation. Now increase in him, Father, so that he can speak your truth unto us. It's in Jesus' almighty name we pray. Bless God. Bless God. Praise God. Praise God. Good morning, people of God. Good morning. It's always a, a beautiful and privileged opportunity to be able to administer the word of God to God's most valued and precious resources, resource, which is his creation, which is you. Um, so we don't, I don't take that lightly. Uh, today, we're going to work in the book of Peter, 2 Peter, 2 Peter, and the first chapter. And what, we, what, what we're going to talk about is, <clears throat> is you shall be blessed. 2 Peter, first chapter. Praise God. Um, King James Version says this. Yeah, your versions may read differently, but we pray they lead to the same conclusion. Second Peter chapter 1, we start verse 3 all the way to verse number 11, and it says this. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him, and hath called us to glory and virtue whereby are given us the exceeding great and precious promises that by these things you might be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to your virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Verse number eight. For if these things be added in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see far off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. 
Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and elect sure. For if ye choose, if you do these things, ye shall, ye shall never fall. For so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly unto the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You shall be blessed. Father, we thank you, God, for your word. We ask, God, that you would surround us with uh, knowledge, with love, with faith, with patience, with virtue, with brotherly kindness, with all the attributes, oh God, that we will be blessed. I surrender, God, that you might increase in me, that you might use me to declare what needs to be said to your people collectively and individually. It's in Jesus' perfect name, I pray. Praise God. Praise God. You shall be blessed. You may be seated wherever you are. We're entering into a new season. We just come out of Thanksgiving and we're entering into the Christmas season. And often we, we know that Christmas season uh, should be one that is about Jesus Christ. It's, um, it's hoped to be uh, about kingdom things. However, the world has used it to monopolize or market um, purchasing or buying gifts mm -hmm. and things are like that and are, are, are abusing what should be a season where we should celebrate um, Christ. My wife says that when she sees Christmas, she thinks of more of Jesus Christ, um, Christmas, Christ, mas, mas, Spanish, more, mm -hmm. so more of Jesus uh, and if that would be so, then um, our season would be full of us trying to um, entangle ourselves and knowing him more and not just about what we gift, gift or we are given um, for the season. Oftentimes when people say I'm blessed, the vast majority of that uh, is from a tangible perspective. It's from a perspective of things that they have been given or things that they have achieved or accomplished. Mm -hmm. um, and if that is true, if that is blessings, then uh, the opposite of that would be a curse. Mm -hmm. So if you're only blessed because you have, then if you don't have, then you're cursed. And that's not the way God works. It doesn't right. work that way. If you are rich and all of a sudden you become poor, then that means that you're no longer blessed. You are cursed. And Fortunately, it doesn't work that way. If you have good health and all of a sudden your health begins to diminish, um, then if you call good health being blessed and then you lose that, then you are cursed because you've chosen to attach your blessing to something that is more closer to favor and not necessarily the idea of what blessed truly is. Um, so we have become accustomed to attaching the word blessed associated with tangible things, mm -hmm. with money, with accolades, with um, physical health improvements, with, with what the world I idealizes as good fortune or accomplishment, but not what God says a blessing is. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to reprioritize our language um, so that we don't misconstrue what blessings truly are. Um, because as, as I said, if you lose your money, um, your mind conceived the idea that you're no longer blessed mm -hmm. and you begin to walk in those attributes that come along with being cursed, such as depression, such as anxiety, such as worry, such as disbelief, such as lack of faith. All of those because you've associated, we've associated a blessing with tangible things. It should not be so. Those are seeds of you truly being blessed. Those are byproducts right. of you walking in the will of God. All of those things are just circumstantial gifts of how you are, how you should be living your life. Because your income is a certain level does not mean that you are blessed. It means that you're, more, you're fortunate. It doesn't mean you're blessed. Um, because your, your IQ is a certain level, it doesn't mean you're blessed. Because your house is a certain size, you drive a nice vehicle, does not mean you're blessed. It means there has been some favor that God has given unto you. It's not 
that you're blessed. So when we look at 2 Peter, I want you to see Peter lay it out. He lays it out very plainly, and he gives us eight principles that describe the attributes of what blessed is. When he goes through the scripture, he pours out faith, virtue, knowledge, temperament, temperance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and charity. All of these are attributes that we have to ascertain to become. They're not things that you can buy. They're not things that can wither away. They're not things that can be stolen. They're not things that you can lose in a bankruptcy. These are things that you and I ought to become. Faith, faith, we know faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the vehicle. Faith is saying that I believe um, that God will, that God can, if I don't even understand it, nor do I have it. He says, in order for you to be blessed, people of God, you have to have faith. You have to have a measure of faith in order for you to be blessed. Then he moves through and he said, in order for you to be blessed, children of God, you have to have virtue. Virtue is a, your character. It's your moral goodness. It's your compass. It's your attributes of who you are as a person. So in order for you to be blessed, you have to have a moral character that resembles the likeness of God. And then he says, in order for you to bless, be blessed, you have to have knowledge. What is that knowledge? That knowledge is the truth of who Jesus is, who God is, and all of the things that he require of you. You can't be spiritually blind and call yourself blessed. You have to have knowledge of the truth, and the truth shall indeed make you free. So you have to have faith, have to have virtue, you have to have knowledge. Then he says you have to have temperance. In order for you to be blessed, you have to have Temperance. Temperance simply says that you have to master the desires of your sensual uh, lust, uh, your perspectives, everything um, in your mind that will push you into the arms of the uh, of Beelzebub, of the arms of the enemy, of the arms of the world. You have to be able to master. Uh, your own desire so that it flows in a direction toward God. He says you have to have temperance. Then he says you have to have patience. Patience is one of those words that we can all, we can throw around different, many, different ways. But in this particular context of the text, this patience is talking about endurance. You have to have endurance. You have to be able to persevere. You have to be able to push through whatever those obstacles are that are in front of you that are trying to keep you from getting to the place where you are truly blessed. You have to have the endurance to be able to uh, fight through um, those strongholds, those struggles, fight through those things that you need to let go so that God can put more into you. He says in order for you to be blessed, you have to have patience. He says, in order for you to be blessed, you have to have godliness. Godliness is a devotion. It's a reverence mm -hmm. unto God. It's the way that you perceive things should be, not from your perspective, from but from perspective of godliness. You have to have godliness. Then he says that you have to have, in order for you to be blessed, you have to have brotherly kindness. Oh, brotherly kindness, Jesus talks about it quite often, and he often gives it in parables when he talks about uh, travelers going down roads and seeing people that are misfortunate, and because you are financially fit, you're able to put people like that in hotels, you're able to lodge them, you're able to feed them without expecting anything else in return. It's the thing that you have to do because you have been blessed. That you have to have brotherly compassion. That you have to uh, uh, see your brother in, in, a, in a light of faith and not where he or she is. Mm -hmm. That you have to desire that they become whole, that they have a relationship with God. And you have to use whatever God has given you to be able to help them get there. He says in order for you to be blessed, you have to have brotherly kindness. Then he ends his message or his letter in, in the, the disciplines, the principles of being blessed with. You have to have charity. Charity constitutes or can be replaced with the word love. 
in order for you to be blessed, walk in the principles of blessings. You have to have love. Without love, Jesus said that love is the, uh, is the first commandment. Love is the principal commandment. Love is the greatest commandment. Uh, without love, it's impossible for you to have faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, goodliness, and brotherly kindness if it's not all wrapped under the umbrella of love. So Peter is having a conversation uh, with the church um, because there's a disillusion um, that blessings only come by the way of your bro the byproducts um, that because you have more land, then that means that you're blessed. Because you have more cattle, and we're talking about in this particular, this particular time, in this historical context, um, because you have more cattle, more sheep, um, you are blessed. Because your vineyards are, blowing, are flowing over, you are blessed. Because you have all of these attributes that seem like an abundance, um, the church perceives that it is a blessing. It's not a blessing um, because the enemy can produce those same fruits. You do remember that when Jesus was coming from his fasting, the word said that 40 days after Jesus had fasted, the enemy came to Jesus and, and asked him that if you do this, if you kneel down unto me, if you submit to my will, I know you're hungry. I'll turn those rocks into bread if you do this. So the, 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 uh, the perspective of having a thing uh, isn't outside the power or the authority of the enemy. Those don't constitute a blessing. What constitute a blessing, truly being blessed, is your faith, your virtue, your knowledge, your temperance, your patience, your godliness, your brotherly kindness, all infused through love. And when I get those things wrapped up, and when I get those things and I be start to become those things, I truly understand what it means to be blessed. Mm -hmm. Because in all of that, when the world starts to turn upside down, mm -hmm. um, when the economy begins to crash, mm -hmm. um, when, when the people that I think are supposed to love me and care for me, mm -hmm. um, when it seems that I've been ostracized, that I've been a beat up, that when I've been abused, when I, I feel like I've been neglected, mm -hmm. well, when it feels like I'm on my own, if I have these virtues, if I have these attributes, if I have these uh, principles established within me, I'm always going to be blessed. <laughs> Regardless of the circumstances around me, yeah. I'm always going to be blessed. Regardless of what I uh, see going on in the world, I'm always going to be blessed because it's within me. He says, for if these things be in you, if faith is in you, if virtue is in you, if knowledge is in you, if temperance is in you, if patience is in you, if godliness is in you, if brotherly kindness is in you, if charity is in you, yes. and they abound. Abounding is a word means that I work through that. That's how I see things. I work through those. That's my lens. That's my uh, compass. Um, that's the way that I view. That's the filter um, that I, uh, I subject myself through so that I can see the world and I can see people, God's people, the way God requires me to see. If I have these things and I work through those things, he says, that you shall never be barren. Barren is a word that the, the word of God often uses with women not being able to bear children. The power of the word um, uh, indicates that uh, being barren isn't ideal because it means that you're not able to do what a thing that is natural that God has given. Uh, so a woman that is barren, she's ostracized, um, she's displaced, she's dislodged, um, she's no longer a member of the community because she can't do the natural thing. But he says that you will neither be barren. Which, which means that regardless of what your physical capabilities are, you are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed and highly favored because he says that you have faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. And they are in you and they abound and you work 
through them, he won't be barren. Notice he didn't mention it. If you've worked 40 hours a week and your paycheck clears and after you've paid your bills, you have $15 left, you are blessed. He didn't, he didn't mention that. He didn't say if your 401k has a couple commas in it, then you are blessed. He didn't mention that. He didn't say when you go to the doctor and they give you a good clean bill of health, you are blessed. He didn't mention that. He didn't say that if you have X amount of followers on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, and all of that, then you are blessed. He didn't mention that. He didn't say if you're able to finagle your way through all kinds of situations, then you are blessed. He didn't mention that. He said if you are blessed, if you are truly blessed, your blessing comes from you demonstrating, from you working it out through these Principles, faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. That is the architectural way of your blessing. It's not by the way of what the enemy can snatch from you, mm -hmm. but it's what God's, God allows you to consume yourself. Mm -hmm. See, this means that we have to get ourselves out of the way. This is a responsibility of us taking ownership of where we are, where we are not. Um, this means that we have to subject ourselves to the will of God and we have to submit, surrender, and obey. This is more difficult than you ascertaining wealth um, because you can get wealth and be the meanest, wickedest person on the planet. You can have great health, but you, your lust, your deceit runs, runs rampant through your entire Life. You can have all of the accomplishment, all of the degrees that you need, um, but your attitude, your attributes, they're nasty and deceitful. But if you get out of the way, if you surrender yourself unto God and you decide to become that which is fully uh, encompassed with faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love, then you have done the most difficult thing that a person can do to ascertain, ascertain a blessing. It's work. Peter says, but if you do it, everything that you once believed was a blessing, it won't be impossible for you. Because wherever the word says that, wherever God is, whatever your feet step, there proceeds yes, the blessing. The blessing. Bless um, so if I'm walking in my faith, if I'm walking in my virtue, if I'm walking in knowledge, if I'm working and walking in temperance and in patience and brotherly kindness and in love, every place that I step, here comes the blessing. Here, blessing. here Come comes on, the pastor. here comes the perceived blessing. Here comes the power. Here comes the anointing. Here comes the favor. Here comes the finances. Here comes the great help. If I'm walking and proceeding in the blessing that God called me to be, everything that I need, God will align it for me. He will put me in places that I should not be because of my past. He will allow blessings to follow me and, and, and hope to get toward me. He will allow the windows of heaven to open up and pour me out of blessing. If I learn just to obey, if I learn just to subject myself to the power and the will of God, if I learn just to submit myself and become faith and become a virtue, and become knowledge, and become temperance, and become patience, and become godliness, and become brotherly kindness, and become love. That's what Peter means when he says, it's in you. I've become that thing. You can't become money. You can't. You can't become a house. You can't. You can't become good health. You can't. You have to become the epitome of why all things was created. Love. You have to become it. And when you become it and start to use it as you look through the periscope of life, everything that you request of God, not only will he show you how to obtain it, he'll show you the way that is um, fit for who you are as a person.
See, oftentimes we look at other people's fortunes and we be like, yo, I want that, I need that, I got to have that. But we don't understand what that person had to go through to get that. Um, and it's not that it's not ascertainable for you, but your route may not be the same as theirs. But because we serve a God that is faithful and that he's not a respecter of person, um, that he gives us favor, the measure of favor, that he gives us all of these things according to his riches and his glory. Because Jesus said that he died, that we might have life and have life abundantly um, because we are his and he is ours. If you learn just to walk in the principle. Not the establishments that man has made, but the principles that God has orchestrated for us, his children, to live in everything that you desire is achievable. Even if you don't have the, the mental capacity to do it. The word says that when Jesus, when, uh, when, when, when God was dealing with um, changing over from King David, and it was now Solomon's turn to lead. The, the, the scripture says that uh, God visited Solomon in a dream and asked him, what is it that you want? Solomon could have asked for fame, fortune. He could have asked for whatever he desired because um, it was God that was going to fulfill the request. And we know that there isn't a lack of anything in the kingdom of heaven that God has it. And he can bestow it upon whoever he feels so. But he asked God for wisdom. And because he asked for God for wisdom and, and not for those things that are vain, not for those things that can be tarnished or stolen or eaten up by moth, rotten away. Because he asked God for wisdom and wisdom, we know that wisdom is the an element that allows us to understand the way that God understands in our capacity um, so that we can work according to the will of God and not our own will. Because he asked God to step in and work through me, God says, you know what, I'm going to give you fortune, fame, and all of that because you asked for assistance to be able to do what I called you to do. You and I, if we don't understand a thing, we have to go to God and ask God for wisdom. For the word says that he gives wisdom liberally, which means that he'll give it if you request it. But you have to ask God um, for those things and not for just the tangible things. Because the truth of the matter is God, if God blessed you with $1 million now, where you are, that $1 million would last you one year um, because you haven't ascertained the values in order to make that sustainable. You're still stuck in where you are with $1,000, with $100. It wouldn't benefit you for God to open up the window now. But because you are his, God says, if you ask me, I'll show you how to manage it. If you ask me, I'll show you where to invest it. If you ask me, I'll show you how to keep it. If you ask me, I'll show you what to use it for. But you have to ask me. But you think you're blessed. You're not blessed because you call yourself blessed. How you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. That was just word. If you don't have love, yeah. if you don't have brotherly kindness, if you don't have godliness, if you don't have patience, temperance, knowledge, virtue, if you don't have faith, those are just words. God is looking for more than just words. He's looking for more than just empty promises. He just He's looking for more than just good sayings, good, 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 um, good quotes. He's looking for more than great bumper stickers. God is looking for you to make an investment in your heart. What will you do for God? So that God can truly show you he's God and that everything that you have been after, everything that you have requested, everything that you conceive to be real. He'll show you that it's possible through a different course and not by you laboring, uh, squandering all of your time away for something that will not produce the fruit that you so, so, not, so desire. The moment you get sick at a job, at a job, you die, you pass away, um, before your funeral, they'll fill your position. But you've labored intensely for that. Why come we don't use that same labor intensely for God? Why come we don't use that same physical strength that we use to please people that don't even care about us? Why come we don't use that to please God and to get closer to God? Why do we exert everything that is natural to us, all of our emotions and all of our energy to please folks that don't care? They're only connected to us because of what they believe that we can achieve, not for who we are. Why come we don't use that same emotional 
energy to get closer to God. It's because our blessings are wrapped up in what they say and not what God has deemed. So let's change our perspective, right? We're in December. Uh, we're in December, a month that is revered throughout the world, celebrated in every country, continent, many different languages, as the season where Jesus was born. Um, what would be more beneficial for us to indulge ourselves in learning more about Jesus than the latest products, than the coolest gadgets, than the budget? Wouldn't it be more beneficial for us to become faith, to become virtue, to become knowledge, to become patience, to become godliness, to become brotherly kindness, to become love. Won't those, and I'll use the iPhone as an example, won't those outlive the device, the new device of the year? iPhone comes out a new phone every six months, <laughs> every year. <laughs> As soon as you buy one, you just realize yours is already outdated, but you have the latest. But, but God is never outdated. The same faith that Moses had, the same faith that Moses had, the same faith that Abraham had, the same faith that Jacob had, the same faith that Isaac had, the same faith that Jeremiah had, the same faith that Esau, same faith that Elijah, the same faith that they had, it's the same faith he requires you. The same virtue from Genesis to Revelation is the same virtue that he requires of you. The same knowledge from all of those books, 66 books that we have at our disposal, he requires of you. The same temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and the same love that he spoke about through the, the, uh, the vehicle of time. He requires of you. So God didn't upgrade. He didn't change the requirement for you to be blessed. What changed is we decided that being blessed was a different vehicle than God. I'm blessed because I have. Right, because I have. But what you have is something that the world can take away immediately. Don't you know with, with money, if they choose to devalue it, mm -hmm. everything that you have in your account that you saved becomes worthless? Don't you know if the economy crashes, that everything that you deem to be significant, that you, that you, that you cherish, that you value, will be worthless? But God. He never loses his value. He's never measured um, by the economics, by the physics, by the statues of the world. He's God. So that means that when I learn to become, and all of this is, is becoming more like Christ, is what Peter is talking, talking to, becoming more like Christ. When I become more like Christ, the things that go around the world, they won't impact me. Because my God, listen, my God, he works through families. Mm -hmm. My God works through uh, 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 yeah. the plagues. And mm -hmm. my God works through defeat. And my God works through um, uh, his, 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 his historical rhetorics that continue through years and years. My God works through all of that. If I have faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, in love. The question is, are you really blessed or are you just giving lip service to a blessing? In this season, in this season, I pray that you're neither barren nor unfruitful. This is what Peter hoped for, that you're neither barren or unfruitful. That you walk in the virtues 
the principles that God has designed for us as his children to become more like him, that we begin to walk in that and we distance ourselves from the pressures of the world. Because only the thing that we do for God will sustain. Everything else will be burned up in the fire. So, I need for you, wherever, whether, rather, wherever you are, regardless of who you are, that you reevaluate what you deem as a blessing. For your blessing doesn't come by the manner in which you think it comes. The blessed are who they become in God and not what the world gives them. It's what God offers to you because of your faithfulness, because of your obedience, because of your love. Those are your blessings. Whatever, whatever else you get, hmm, symptoms of being blessed. But your true blessing is that it becomes me. But he, but he says this, but he doesn't like these things. It's blind. I cannot see fall. And he has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. It's a tragedy that when, when people began to prosper in life, they forget about all the things that God brought them through and all the things that God forgave them of. And then they turn their nose up at those that struggle with the same issue. Don't let that be you. Brotherly kindness and love will keep you from turning, uh, turning your back on a brother or sister um, that is struggling with the same issue that you are. That's why we're so connected. You wonder why people come to you that have that that have been that are going through what you've been through because God knows how to use us to minister to folks with those same issues because we've overcome them. That's why they keep calling you and texting you. It's not because you have all the answers. It's because you have an answer uh, for that particular thing because you came through it yourself. He says they have been they his sins was purged from his old sins. Whether wherefore. The rather and brethren give diligence to make your own calling and elect sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. Peter offers the church a surety, a guarantee. As once himself who was lost, who spent time with Jesus and didn't understand what Jesus was trying to teach him until Jesus was gone. That he says that when I found, when I found the answer was in the message that he was preaching, I became Peter. I became that same Peter that walked through, through the city streets and because of my shadow that they became healed. I became the same Peter that preached, um, that was anointed, that 5,000 were saved. When I learned to understand the message that he was preaching, then I was able to become who he said I could become. I, it became me. I became it. And it abound in me. I saw through that. You have to learn that God is trying to do something through you. Not only is it for you, but it's also for all of those that have yet to make Jesus their Lord and Savior that are still lost. God is trying to do it through you. For so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly unto the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He closes it by mentioning that, well, he closes that 11th verse by mentioning that what you need to survive what you need to feel safe, to feel accomplished. Um, you don't have to wait to heaven to get to heaven. You can be blessed and blessed indeed right here where you are, mm -hmm. in your city, in your house, 
in your state or your condition. You can be blessed and highly favored right where you are if you learn to become the blessing. Be like Christ. Be like Christ. Let your Christmas season make this a transformation for you that I want to be more like Christ. It doesn't matter the gifts that you give away because those gifts will get old. Um, but the gift of the Lord, the gift of Jesus, it never gets old. It only gets better the more that you invest in it, the more stronger you become, the more freer you become, um, the more powerful, anointed you become when you learn that you have to make the greatest investment in yourself. And then you shall never be barren or unfruitful. You shall be blessed. Yes. Bless God. So, I hope something through this. Go back and read um, both books, uh, First Peter and Second Peter. They're very short books. Go back and read them uh, for you can get a complete understanding of what Peter was trying to um, write regarding his experiences with Jesus to the church that was going to come up after that. Uh, go back and read both First and uh, Second Peter for more wisdom than what we shared this morning. But I pray that something said that will not just cause you to think, but cause you to do. And in your doing, that you will be honest with who you are and what you need to accomplish in order for you to become more like Christ. That you don't miss out on a real blessing because you're trying to achieve it through natural means, through natural means. The real, man, if I could tell you how, 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 just trusting God that he just opens up. I couldn't, I can't tell you that just by trusting God that he just opens up doors that I knew, didn't know they were there, that he allowed things to come into fruition that I had no idea were coming. And, and, and at times and seasons when I absolutely needed, it wasn't because I had experience or because I had uh, the, the knowledge to go to ask. It was because I had favor with God because of my choice to, and I'm not perfect but my choice to try to allow God to work it out in me through faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and through love, that God will pour out a blessing that blow, that will blow your mind, um, even in this season. So I pray that you would evaluate you would become a doer and that you would be thankful in all of that, that he's transforming you into what you should be and not what the world has deemed you to be because you are, you are blessed. You are blessed. Praise God. So today we want to offer, as, as we always do, we don't take lightly of it. And just make an assumption that uh, people that go to church or that watch or whatever that they're all that they're saying, uh, we, ha we would like to extend the uh, the opportunity for you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and um, He does that through salvation. Salvation is a, a process. The Word says that if you believe and God raised Him from the dead, therefore you are saved. If you go through Romans, you'll read more of it. Galatians, you'll read more of it. And you'll see that um, it's a heart thing that you have to make confessions with your heart and believe um, that he is the son of God. And then therefore that connection, that established uh, contract with sin uh, will be made null and void, will be broken. Your name will be written in the Lamb Book of Life. And through that, all of these principles uh, will be added unto you that you shall be saved. Um, so that's a confession that you have to do on your own. No one can 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 save you if you don't want to be saved. Man, through salvation, there is an ordinance of baptism. We baptize through through the water baptism. We've seen Jesus through the Word do it, and um, because He did it, the the Word reminds us or tells us that God was pleased, and we heard the voice of God crack open the heavens and say, "This is my Son, whom I'm well pleased." 
And we believe that as he's written that when one sinner is saved, that the angels in heaven rejoice. So we're going to believe that um, if you're seeking wisdom, if you're seeking truth, that you take the time to say oh, and believe that the only the real truth comes through your knowledge of God. But in order to get to God, you have to go through Jesus. He's the only he's the door. He's the only way to God. Mm -hmm. And so you must be saved. And then we'll administer baptism. Now, we know churches are, are limited and some of them aren't open. However, um, through your faith, uh, you can be baptized through your tub, through your water faucet, whatever means there is. Don't allow uh, your inability to get to a church to facilitate a baptism. Stop you from trying to attempt the ordinance. God knows. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what you're expecting to be. Surround yourself with someone, some people that can administer that baptism and will trust that God accepts it and, and we believe that he will. For he accepted the baptism of Philip and the eunuch in a puddle of water. And we believe that he'll do it for you as well today. So that's that. And then also, um, we know that people are genuinely, gen, 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 what is the word? genuinely saved. Uh, because of what comes out of their heart, right? And that's, it's not up to us to decide um, whether they are, whether they aren't. But sometimes those, those we can have um, lapse in, in our relationship with God because of different circumstances. And, and if you've had a lapse, if you've um, been out of the, the fold, if you've been out of relation with God, and you're not reading, you're not praying, you're not meditating, you're not fasting because you've uh, had some hardships and you've prayed and they didn't come to fruition. Well, you know, um, he's still God. Regardless if you get it or not, he's still God. So let's ask God for, for direction and for wisdom and for forgiveness and for being angry with God. Let's ask God that today. And then there's, there's always those that are working, they're travailing, they're, they carry this burden, the ministry, and they just need some strength. You know, let's do that today. Let's do that today. So whatever your need is, mm -hmm. if you need strength, forgiveness, salvation, um, clarity, um, whatever that need is that you need, let's go to God together. And as a church family, we'll believe that God will uh, answer you and we hope and pray that you would believe that God will do the same for us as we're a church family as well um, so make your request known and God will do the rest uh, let's pray dear God we thank you for the time that you spent with us in the word this morning we thank you for showing us uh, what true a true blessing is and the requirements that you've laid out for us to be blessed we ask God that you begin to strip off of the world's viewpoint of a blessing and that we begin to uh, draw ourselves unto you uh, that we will obtain those things truly needed to call ourselves blessed so that we can walk in the fruit of blessings and not just by lip service. We glorify you and honor you and we thank you in advance for all the things that you're going to do beyond this here hour. We pray that you would bless the one that needs salvation, that you would uh, receive him or her unto yourself, that as they confess and they believe, um, that you would allow your anointing to fall fresh on them, that you would fill them with the Holy Spirit, and that you have wiped their slate clean, write their names in the Lamb Book of Life, and that from this day forward, they shall be forever changed. Now, we ask that you give them a new mind, speak unto them new tongues, that you would are delivering them from every affliction and every torment um, because they're yours. Now, God, we pray that you surround them by people that will help them to, to mature in your word. Uh, we love you and we thank you. We pray, God, that you would continue to draw your children back unto you, even us that have fallen away because of circumstances, because of hardships, or because of whatever thing that allows us, allowed us to be upset or angry, um, with you, that we've stopped communicating. We ask that you would uh, diminish that gap, 
that we will be drawn back unto you. For God, uh, we uh, repent of every sin, O oh Lord. Um, we pray that you would direct us to a, a healthier way of expressing our concern, and one that doesn't one that doesn't mean that we neglect uh, to be in communion with you. We pray, God, for those, your servants that are laboring, O oh Lord. We pray that you would strengthen them. We pray that you would surround them with people that would encourage and lift them up. We pray, God, that you would continue to be an anchor, that you would uh, allow fresh anointing to fall upon them, um, that you would continue to use them as you see fit. We are all your children, Almighty God. And we know that because of that, that you have given us certain rights and privileges, such as your full armor. So, God, we now hereby place on our full armor that we're protected against the wiles of the enemy. We thank you, God, for the garment of praise that is bestowed upon us in the oil of gladness. Let us learn how to walk in our full anointing and not be distracted by the things or the people that are around us, but let us be confident in this, that while we were sinners, your son, Jesus Christ, died for us. And because of that sacrifice, Lord, that you have given us the ability uh, to be back in right relations with you. So let us not take that for vain. Let us not overlook that gesture of, uh, hmm, of extreme courage that was taken for us, those that he didn't even know. Let us not take that in vain, but let us use that so that we are drawn to you so that we can achieve all the principle needed to be blessed, faith and virtue, and knowledge and temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and most importantly, love. We honor and we glorify you and we thank you in advance. May your spirit bless not only this house, but every household represented, that she would speak to them, O oh God, and that she would use them as you see fit. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Praise God. So also today is a first Sunday, so we will be at Trinity. We will be observing communion together. So for all of you, if that's not a practice that you're doing now, we are. We ask you what well, the scripture we read is 1 Corinthians and 1 Corinthians um, chapter 11 verses 23 through 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 through 29 32 32 we use those as our um, our background text for um, communion but often sometimes some churches have have deemed that Communion is only for those to be that are saved. However, according to the text, um, we know the requirement is examination, not yet salvation. And we also know that Jesus was still amongst his disciples when he administered communion to his his disciples, apostles. So, so uh, yeah, the entire twelve, including Judas. And so that means even if you have some things that are not yet overturned to God, um, that he still desires to have communion with you. So uh, take that scripture, read it. Um, household juice, crackers, ask God to bless it and it shall be. Matter of fact, go ahead and read the scripture and then we'll proceed with, with Trinity, what we're doing. First Corinthians chapter 11, uh, beginning at verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Mm -hmm. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord 
eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we judged ourselves, we would not come under judgment. Whenever we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we are not condemned with the world. Praise God. So in essence, Paul is saying that you need to repent, that you need to be honest about where you are, and that um, you allow God to, to purge you so that you can be, that you can participate. And notice he didn't mention salvation. So uh, let that be said. Um, thank God for you and uh, have a wonderful, blessed Sunday. You shall be blessed. Blessed, praise God.